We're back with the bigger picture. Stand by, fashion east end, three, two. The fashionistas had it all and spent it all on designer clothes, bags, shoes. They never worried about the cost. And then the other stiletto dropped. Our Alison Bushnick tonight with a new breed they're calling recessionistas. From the catwalk to the cash draft, the new F word in fashion is frugal. You used to go into the fashion shows and you would immediately be presented with a little mini bottle of champagne and it was all sparkling and everyone was laughing. This year the sponsor is McDonald's and we have the McCafe. These are serious economic times and you can see it on the runway. It's really black. From high-end fashion to the mall, everyone is cash concerned. And this is where it all collides. In homes and closets, she's there. Meet the recessionista. This is one of my prize pieces, my Chanel jacket. Mary Hall used to buy what she wanted when she wanted. She didn't care about the price. The old me, uh, I would definitely pay retail full price. As my dad used to say, I do hold a black belt in shopping. I have shopped all around the world. Then things changed. Now she's all about saving money, but still buying the brands she desires. This is my Louis Vuitton bag. What's her definition of a recessionista? This is someone who wants to remain stylish, look good, wear classic clothes, but not pay full price for them. So how did the new term come about? Well, you take the style-obsessed fashionista, you enter a recession where they have to shop on a budget, and voila, recessionista. Recessionistas are chic and cheap. Dress, Zach Posen. Belt, Todd Oldham Vintage. Bag, Gucci, and worth every penny. The days of excess are gone. Now they still want their Chanel, Prada and Fendi. They just want it for less. And it's great to talk about getting a great deal. Everyone, everyone, perfect cocktail party conversation. Everyone wants to hear about the deals. I have changed yeah. them before. And it's not just about saving money. It's about looking good in tough competitive times when people are losing their jobs. And that's why consignment shops coast to coast are busier than ever. In Vancouver, this purse here would retail for about $1,800. It's a McQueen, and uh, we've got it for $273. The Ray-Ban sunglasses? We've seen a lot of first-time customers, uh, a lot of people that have never considered shopping consignment before, and they're coming, they're checking us out. I knew I had to tell you. Even fashionable Yorkville in Toronto, at Elegant, consignment is cool. I'm just picking the Prada shoes off the shelf. <laughs> $79. How much do you think a shoe like this would be regularly? Prada, they usually go between, I would say, three fifty, four, five hundred dollars $500. And this is $900, right? The Chanel, the red yeah. one. It also means more people are cleaning out their closets, hoping to make some cash by selling. Whoever is bringing the merchandise here to us for resale, with the money, they can go back to the re re retail stores and purchase it brand new. And we have 2,000 pairs. Then there's eBay Canada. They've seen an increase in shoppers and sellers. So here you see the original um, label on the jeans. Especially in jeans. Premium brands sell for hundreds of dollars in the stores. Here the average price of a pair of jeans is 50 bucks. And don't forget about the shoes. Look at these. They're fabulous. <laughs> Maybe not to everyone's taste, but true fashionista footwear. Andrea Stairs is the head of marketing for eBay, but she's also a recessionista with a Fendi purse. I wanted something a little sharp, but I wasn't going to spend a $900 on a purse. So getting it for about $180 was definitely, including shipping, was definitely um, something I was able to afford um, and able to still be a fashionista in a recessionary time. And do you think that's what recessionistas are looking for? Brand names that are in good shape that they can buy for a good deal? I think they are. I think what they're doing is they're trying to be the same person they've always been, brand conscious, very um, you know, fashion forward, but do it in a way that's not going to break the bank. And it's not just clothing. People are saving money by saving their souls by going to the cobbler. The soles and heels um, and the less complicated repairs has increased quite a bit. I'd say over last year probably by 50%. This third generation cobbler even had to hire more staff. Yes, the recession is good for us. Jimmy Choo's, Valentino's, and just regular shoes. People even shipped their shoes to his Vancouver store. We had ladies' boots in here. I think they were close to $3,000. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. And it seems we don't just worry about what we wear. 
uh, our numbers are actually up. Our numbers are up for Botox. For cosmetic dermatologist Dr. Fred Wexberg. In t hard economic times with work, they need that competitive edge. So this will give you that freshened up look. Perfect for spring. And that means increases in injectables like Botox. It's, it's about looking the best that I can. Um, I'm in my 50s now and um, I think it's really important. It's not like I'm trying to look like I'm 25, but I want to you know, continue to look the best that I can for the age that I'm at. And it's not just women. We have a lot of men coming in saying, uh, you know, there's a lot of firings going on. I need to be my best. I need to be competitive. So I want to look refreshed and I don't want to look angry. And a uh, little Botox uh, cosmetic will perk it up and nobody will know. So men can be recessionistas too. Back to the catwalk. It's not just the fashionistas who have changed. The designers have as well. Creating new separate clothing lines to help the bottom line. So you have a high contrast example. What Robert is Ott is the head of the School of Fashion at Ryerson University. In many cases, designers will come up with what's called diffusion lines. So somehow it incorporates the name of the designer, but it's done at a much, much lower price point. And that means more new looks for recessionistas like Mary as they continue to look stylish and chic on a budget. Over here I've got some of my favorite Chanel pieces all bought from consignment store eBay. Mary has gone from extravagant to thrifty and never been happier. These are my lucky Chanel charms. Her friends and family wanted her tips, so she started the Recessionista blog, dedicated to savings on fashion, dining out and entertaining in the global economy. I actually had to fight for these ladies. These I got for $200, but they would have retailed for $1,000. They are adorable. Her blog is read in 120 countries. Americans and Canadians are her top readers. If there's a deal, Mary can tell you where to find it. It's possible to look very elegant for a lot less. I get very excited finding the shopping deals. It's like a you know, high five for me. Coming up next week on 16 by 9 there are two certainties in life, death and taxes, but one man claims he's found a way to avoid one of them, paying taxes, except it's landed some people in jail. That's our next 16 by 9 investigation. So I read the law, I understand it for what it says, and if I have to make a statement by going to jail, so be it. You would go to jail for this? Of course. That's coming up next week on 16 by 9. And that's it for us tonight. If you have a story idea for us, just give us a call at 1-877-TELL-69 or email us at global16by9.com. And don't forget to blog with us right after the show about any of the stories you saw tonight. And now you can even send us a video message through YouTube or Facebook. Thanks for watching. I'm Mary Garofello. And from all of us here, good night. Our final word tonight goes to our 16 by 9 viewers. I wanted to write to thank you for airing this piece on JD Fortune last week and help explain what was really going on. Through JD's story, I found your show and the pieces I got to see impressed me. I'll definitely be watching in the future. 16 by 9, the bigger picture. That's a wrap. <laughs>